Hello. In this video, we're going to solve a sample problem that might form part of a strategy game. Uh, let's try that again. That's better. The problem is to simulate one stage of a battle between an army of orcs and an army of elves. We're going to read in two files from disk, do some calculations, then display the result. Imagine that we have a map divided into squares. We're given two files. One file indicates which squares of the map are occupied by an orc. The other file does the same for elves. If a square has both an orc and an elf, a battle will be fought there. Our job is to display a text map indicating where the battles occurred. If you're enrolled in CSSE 120 or 221, you can check out Orcs and Elves from your subversion repository. Otherwise, you can download a zip file of the project. Once you have the files, let's head over to Eclipse. To get started solving this problem, let's take a look at what files are included. In our source folder, we have Orcs and Elves C. And this starts out like our files have been. We've got our comments at the top, uh, a couple of includes, then we have a define for the size of the map, so we'll probably need to use that. And then a type def for Boolean and the values true and false, so we can use those instead of just having to use the integers 1 and 0. Then there's a bit of code given in our main function. We've got some code that actually prints the resulting map. And so we've got a couple of nested loops to loop over the rows and columns. And right now we just have a printf that's printing out a dash in line 27. So let's go ahead and try to compile and run this and see what sort of output we get. So we'll do a run as local C, C++ application. And now if I pull my console up a little bit bigger, we can see that it's printing a size by size grid of minus signs. So that's a start. And then finally at the end, we return exit success. So there's the code we'll be building on. Let's take a look at our orcs.txt input file here. If I double click that, I can see that it just has pairs of rows and columns as uh, was shown in the slides. And I suspect elves is the same. Yeah, so the same sort of situation there. So let's close those so we can work with them in our C code and go back to the C code. Now the first thing we need to do is actually read in one of these files. And in the slides we started with orcs, so let's start with orcs in the, uh, in the code as well. And so I guess the thing to do is start in main and just try to read in the orcs data and then maybe we could just print that out. Well, if we're going to read in that data and then print it, we need an array to store the values. So maybe we should make a two-dimensional array using our Boolean type defined above uh, to store where the orcs are. So we'll do Boolean orcs, and that's an array of size rows and size columns. And then after we've defined the array, I guess, uh, I guess we need to do our file I.O. So let's make a file pointer and call it in file. And then we'll use that to open the file. So in file gets f open of, oh, and we need the file name, so that's orcs.txt. And we just need to open that for reading. Now whenever we open a file, we need to check to make sure it opens successfully. So we'll check whether in file is null. And if it is, we'll print an error message. and then we'll exit the program. OK, so now at line 27, we've successfully opened the file. And now we have to uh, read in the data in the file and decide what to do with our orcs array. And so I guess we need to be able to scan in each of these lines from the file. And it's going to have a pair of numbers in it. And those numbers represent a row and a column. So maybe the next thing to do is to create a couple of variables to store that row and column as we read them in. Now, how do we read in a single line from this? Well, we can use fscanf to do that. So we use fscanf from in file, and then we need a format string to specify how we want to read that data. Well, it's two integers separated by a comma and followed by a new line. And we want to read the first value into the address of R and the second value into the address of C. Now, fscanf actually gives us back a value that tells us how many items were read in. So 
let's create a count variable here and read those in. Okay, so that looks like good progress. And after we read those in, then I guess we've got a row and a column. And so we could set the orcs array at row R and column C to be true, because we know that there's an orc in that location. Okay, so that's going to read a single line in from the file. And maybe that's good enough for now. Maybe we should just start with that and go ahead and close the file at this point. And we know that that's not complete, but it's a start. It's going to read in a single line from the file if we've done it right. And then we'll actually print out the map. Well, when we're printing the map, for now, maybe we should just print the values in the orcs array instead of just the minus signs. And that way, we'll be able to see if we read in the, uh, the orcs file correctly. So in here, we could, uh, we could use an if to check whether or not there's an orc in the current row and column. So if orcs at row column. And that's actually a Boolean value. So we don't have to compare that to anything. We can just say if orcs row column. Well, in that case, we want to do a print f. And we'll print out an O to indicate that there's an orc there. Otherwise, for now, I guess for now, we can just print that dash out to indicate that there's not an orc there. All right, so that's a start. We're only reading in a single row from the file, but let's see what happens when we build and run that. So I'm going to right click and choose Run As, CC++. Oh, and we've got errors exist. Oh, I see. I've got a typo there. So we'll say no and go back. And we should actually be looking at in file there. And I'm going to hit Control B to rebuild. Oh, and I've got another error here. Ah, so I've got multiple declarations of row and column, because it's already defined down in lines 34 and 35. So let's delete lines 34 and 35. We'll save that and build it again with Control B. We've got a warning here. Oh, it's warning me because the count variable isn't used. Let's not worry about that one for right now. We're going to come back and clean that up. But let's see if we'll, the code we have so far will work. So let's go ahead and run that. And I'm going to use the Control F11 hotkey to run that. Oh, well, that doesn't look good. We only read in a single line, but we've got orcs all over the place. Oh, we forgot to initialize our two-dimensional array. So we need to actually loop through and initialize all the elements of the orcs array to false before we read in the file. So I guess the right place to do that is up here before we do the file I.O. So up here in line, between lines 20 and 21. So we'll go up here. And uh, I guess we'll need a row and column there. So maybe we should move our row and column declaration from down below to up above. So I'll select those and cut them. And then come up above and paste them in. And now we just need to write a couple of loops to loop over and initialize that array. And then inside those loops, we'll just set each element of the two-dimensional array orcs. So for each row and each column, we'll say, so far, there's no orc there. All right, well, let's Control F11 and run that again. And if we make our console a little bigger, we see that we're getting just a single orc. But I'm not sure it should be in column row 0, column 0. So let's look at the orcs file. Oh, I guess the first one is in row 0, column 0. Maybe what we should do here is change this 0, 0 to a 0, 1. And then we'll close that. And look, let's run it again and see if that orc moves over on our file. And it did. Excellent. So it looks like we're successfully reading in a single line. OK. Well, if we can read in one line, the next thing we want to do is be able to read in multiple lines. And if we're going to do that, it seems like we probably need some sort of loop here. And so a while loop seems like the right thing. So we'll put a while loop in here. And I like to sometimes just put a comment in here. And then I can come back and fill that in. So I can worry about getting my loop done first, and then worry about the condition. So while I'm not done, well, I want to do the read. I want to set the orcs array. And then after I'm done, I'll close the file. Now, how do I know when I'm done? 
One way to tell that I'm done is that my scan of the file returns something other than two, and that means that there weren't two variables to read in. And so a nice way to do that in C is actually to move the scan up into the while loops condition. So I'm going to copy this fscanf, and I'm going to put it in up here. And so I'm going to do the fscanf to set the row and column, and then I'm going to check and make sure that that's exactly equal to 2. And so if the scan isn't equal to 2, then I'm done. I'll skip the rest of the loop body. But if it is equal to 2, then I know that the row and column were read in from the file, and they're correct. And so now I can actually get rid of that row, and that count variable that I had before, I don't actually need. So now while each read is successful, I've got a row and column, so I set orcs to true, and then I try again. So let's go ahead and use Control F11 and run that. And now we see that we have orcs in the three positions that were indicated in the file. So excellent. We've made a lot of progress on this problem. If we were being graded on it, we'd have a lot of partial credit already. All right, so what's the next thing we need to do? Well, I guess we need to read in the elves file as well. Now, we're tempted here to select all this file code and just do a copy and paste of it. But whenever we're tempted to copy and paste a big chunk of code, that should be a warning to us because it probably means we're about to take a bug and put that bug in multiple locations and make it even harder to fix. So what I want to do here is take the code for initializing the array and reading in the file, and I want to move that all to a helper method. And so I'm going to put in the skeleton of my helper method first. So it's not going to return anything, and I'm going to call it read file. And then it needs to take a two-dimensional array, which I'm going to let the, the uh, read file function initialize. And I'm just going to call it array. And then I guess I want to be able to use this with multiple files. So let's pass in a character pointer, which is the file name. So there's our skeleton. And now what I want to do is take all my code for initializing the array and reading in the file and move that up into the helper function. So I'm going to select all the way from line 25 down to the close in line 43. I'm selecting all that. I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to come up into my read file function and paste it in. And then we'll have to do a little bit of cleanup because we moved it from one location to another. And we're also going to have to change main. And maybe we should put in a comment here to actually call the helper function using the orcs array. All right, so let's go look at our read file. So we've got a row and a column, and we're going to loop over those. And now instead of orcs, it's going to be whatever array we pass in. And we want to set that to false. OK, so we've done that. Then we want to open a file, but instead of using a literal string here, we want to actually use our parameter file name. So that'll open whatever file we passed in. Um, oh, and then our error message here, we better fix that. So instead of orcs.txt, let's use some string formatting. We'll put a percent %s there, and that lets us put the file name parameter as an argument to print f, to print that out. Um, then our fscanf, that looks right. We're going to get the row and column from the file. And that's the same whether it's the orc file or the elf file. But then we want to set arrays row column to true. And so, so far that looks good. Let's go ahead and hit Control B to build that. I happen to know there's an error in this code. And if we look at all the places where we're trying to write to the array, the C compiler's confused because we haven't told it how big that array is, and it's not able to figure out where in memory to put that false value that we're asking it to put there, or in line 36 to put that true value in the right case. And I actually don't pass two-dimensional arrays uh, to functions in C often enough to know exactly how to do this. And so I actually did some Googling, and I found this URL that had an answer on how to pass two-dimensional arrays to functions in C. So if you go and look at that URL, you'll find that what we have to do is tell the C compiler how many columns there are. And it turns out that that's sufficient for it to figure out what these references mean in line 25 and line 37. 
So if I put that in and build it, I see that the error in line 25 went away, but I still have an error in line 37. And if I hover over that, I see that that arrays is not declared. And that's because I've got a typo here. It really should have been array, not arrays. So if I save that and hit Control B, now it builds without error. At least the read file function builds without error. I see looking at the sidebar in Eclipse that there's still a couple of errors down below. So let's scroll down to the main function and see if we can figure that out. Oh, I moved the row and column uh, variable declarations into my helper function. So now I have to add them back down here so that I've got a row and column for my printout. So let's save that and build that. All right, it's error free now. So are we done? Can we go ahead and run it? Well, I guess we could run it, but we haven't taken care of our to do in line 44. So we actually have to call the helper function. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll call read file. And we're going to pass the orcs array to that, and then the file name, which is orcs.txt. So let's save that. And we'll go ahead and hit Control F11 to run it. And if we make our console bigger, excellent. It looks like we successfully refactored that code to use a helper function. So that was a little work to do that. But we're going to see that it's going to pay off right now. So we've got that working. Let's go ahead and see if we can make it work for elves. So I guess for elves, we're going to need another two-dimensional array. And then to initialize it and read in from the file, we'll do read file, and we'll pass elves. And then we'll give the file name. And let's go ahead and run that. Oh, and I got an error message, unable to open elf.txt. Well, it looks like we were saved by our check in the read file function, where we made sure we could open the file. And the problem here, and you probably noticed it, is that I used the wrong file name. So let's go back to line 46 and change it to be the correct file name, elves. All right. So with that change, Control F11 to run it. And it ran successfully. Now, I don't know whether we actually got any elves, because our printing isn't printing out any uh, ease for elves. But now we can deal with the actual printout. And let's see what we need to do there. So I guess we could do a nested if here. And if we find an elf in a location, then in that case, we want to print out an E. And I guess these should all be chained together. So let's change uh, this to an else if. So if it's elves, then we'll print an E. Otherwise, if it's an orc, we'll print an O. Otherwise, we'll print out the minus sign. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, now we're getting orcs and elves. And so we're really close. The only thing we haven't done yet is actually print out the stars when we had a battle in a location. So let's see if we can add that. Well, I guess to check if there's a battle in a location, all we need to do is see if there's both an orc and an elf in that location. So we can add another if for that. So if we've got an orc in the row and column, and we've got an elf in that row and column, well, in that case, we'll print out an asterisk. Otherwise, we'll do our other checks. Let's go ahead and hit Control F11 to build it and run it. And we see that we've got our map printed out. We've got a battle in the location where there's an orc and an elf. And otherwise, we show all the locations of the orcs and elves. But I think we successfully solved our problem. I hope you enjoyed working on that. I hope you liked that idea of refactoring to put the read file all in one place so we didn't have to uh, duplicate any code. And remember, you don't have to have the answer to everything. Just break it down into pieces, solve what you can, and build up a solution from there. Until next time, I'm Kurt. Catch you later.